This is lesson 9-4. Uh, your objective today is that you'll be able to solve for zeros using the square root method. Uh, so what we're talking about today is uh, kind of using our square roots to help us find some of these equations. Um, and we're going to kind of start off a little bit um, on the easy side, and as you can kind of imagine, we'll kind of progress and make it a little bit harder. So starting off with number four, I have x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now, for those of you that are kind of really good with the intercept form at this point in time, um, you might immediately just be like, oh, this is what you can do, and you can solve that. And that's, that's great. However, what we're kind of addressing here is how we can use square roots in order to help us kind of fa potentially find some of these answers. And so kind of the, the big thing that we're going for is we want to make it so that, to put it bluntly, this it works. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to get this x squared by itself and evaluate. And so uh, this is kind of like, you know, what you did back in the very beginning of the class where, okay, we want to put 9 on both sides. Oops, not equals. Yeah. Add 9 to both sides, and so you get x squared equals 9. And from that, I do the square root. And I get x equals positive 3 and negative 3. Again, the idea is whenever we have a square, we're square rooting a number um, with a variable on the other side, we're going to have two answers. We're going to have both the positive number and the negative number. Let's look at number five. If I have x squared plus eight equals zero, the method is still the same. I subtract eight from both sides, and I get x squared equals negative eight. I do the square root, and I do the square root, and I immediately see I have the square root of a negative, which again, the square root of negative one we represent with i. And so I get x equals, and I probably would just put plus or minus uh, i root 8. However, this 8 can actually get um, factored out. So if you do that factor tree, so 2 and 4, 2 and 2, here's 1, here's 2, here's 3 of them. If I have 2, I take 1 out. So I get x equals plus or minus 2i square root of 8, or square root of 2. That's my answer for 5. For 6, the big idea uh, whenever we're doing these is that we need to get the x squared by itself. And we do kind of that, that reverse order of operations, that reverse PEMDAS, in order to get that. And so I'm going to start off with, and I go, okay, minus 10 minus 10, so I get 2x squared equals negative 10. Is the x squared by itself? No, it still has this 2 with it, so I divide by 2 on both sides. And so I get x squared equals negative 5. Square root, square root, and so I get x equals, oh, I can't do a negative, so I'm going to put an i on the outside. And 5 is actually already a prime number, so it has a 5 but I have a plus or minus on it. Okay. Number seven. X squared minus 24 equals 40. All right, this one looks different. Why? Because we have numbers on the other side. But that doesn't change anything. We still are just going to get x squared by itself, uh, 24. And so we get x squared equals 64. I do the square root, and I get x equals plus or minus, and the square root of 84 is 8, or 64 is 8. All right, number 8, 2x squared minus 72, 72 equals 0. So again, I add 72, and I get 2x squared equals 72. We divide by 2, and we get x squared equals 
36. Square root, square root, and I get x equals plus or minus 6. Again, you only get this plus or minus whenever you do the square root with a variable. I think a lot of people kind of get that messed up a little bit. If you're just told, all right, what's the square root of 3, or square root of 4, the answer is 2. But if you have it with this x, you have the two different versions. negative x squared plus 25 equals 25. Okay, so I subtract 25 from both sides and I get negative x squared equals 0 divide by negative 1. I get x squared equals 0 square root both sides and I get x equals plus or minus, but with zero, we're just, we just put zero. Okay. 10. X minus four squared equals zero. Now with this one, it seems a little different and it kind of is nothing about it really changes too much. We still do the square root. But the reason that this is a little different, and maybe I should explain that a little better, is we already kind of have, we, we can't really go any farther with this squared being here. I mean, we could, you know, go, okay, x minus four, x minus four, do all that, and then kind of solve from there. However, this saves us a little bit of work. Because what we can do is we can simply just do a square root on both of those, and that gives us x minus 4 equals 0. And just so you, it, there is technically a plus or minus on there, and, but we don't really address that, again, because this is 0. And so we have x minus 4 equals 0. And I still need to get x by itself, so I add 4 to both sides. And so we get x equals Four. Number 11, x plus 2 squared equals 9. Again, we can't really go any farther with this until we get rid of that squared. So I do the square root of both of these. And so I get x plus 2 equals, and 9 is plus or minus 3. Again, because we have that x in there, we put give both values and then we subtract 2. And where this gets a little different is this is we go 3 minus 2 and we go negative 3 minus 2. So we get that x equals 1 and negative 5. Or really vice versa is how you'd want it. Is you'd want that negative first. All right. Number 12. 3x plus 1 squared equals 49. Again, we can't really go any farther with this squared being here, so we square root both sides. And we get 3x plus 1 equals, the square root of 49, is plus or minus 7. Now I'm going to kind of keep doing the same thing, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. But with that, I get two different answers. I get uh, whenever I do negative 7 minus 1, and I get when I do negative uh, positive 7 minus 1. And so my 3x is equal to both, is to that equal to two things. It's equal to negative 8, and it's equal to 6. And then I divide, both, uh, divide everything by 3. So my answers for x are negative 8 over 3, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So those are my two answers. Uh, number 13, describe and correct the error in solving the equation x squared minus x squared minus 9 equals 16 using square roots. Um, so this person, what they did is they had x squared minus 9. They did x minus 3 equals 4. They did the square root. And then they did x equals 7. Where did they go wrong? 
Well, where they went wrong is you don't do the square root uh, until the very end unless you're inside of parentheses and you can't go any farther without doing the square root. You kind of leave the square root for last if at all possible. If you think of PEMDAS and kind of how you go backwards uh, whenever you're solving for a variable, you uh, the squared, the x squared is located here at the e. And so that's when we get rid of it. We don't, we don't get rid of it until the only thing we have left is really parentheses. And even then, nothing can happen to the parentheses. And so I go, OK, what this should be is x squared minus 9 equals 16. I want to add 9 to both sides. And so I get x squared equals 25. We do the square root. We do the square root. So we get x equals Again, we have this x, so we get plus or minus 5. And that takes care of that. Go ahead and check with your teacher on what your assignment is. Have a good one.